Hi everyone, this is Brian and welcome to my power case, Paint the Town Bread. You are going to practice a realistic case interview. If you are watching this on YouTube, I want you to comment on this video with your actual responses. I will then reply back with my assessment of your response as either good or great. Okay, let's get started. Our client is the new Senior VP for a national pizza chain. In taking a look at his company's performance versus the competition, he believes that his company's profitability on a percentage basis isn't as high as industry benchmarks would suggest. He wants us to look into the problem by focusing on the company's pizza and cheese breadstick sales, which make up nearly all the sales for the company. The client has two primary questions. One, why is profitability not as high as expected? And two, what can they do to improve profitability? So with that said, pause the video now and write down any clarifying questions you have. Okay, in regards to a clarifying question you may have asked regarding if our client has any specific profitability targets, no, they do not have any specifics to provide. Great, so go ahead and take a few moments to lay down how you would approach this problem. Pause the video now, write down your structure, and then say it out loud. Now, I'm going to talk through an example of a good, typical case structure. Okay, to understand why profitability isn't meeting expectations, I like to break down the company's profit into two components, revenue and cost. And the drivers of revenue are price and quantity, so I like to understand what's changed over time there. And also, the drivers of costs are fixed costs and variable cost. And so I like to understand if perhaps there have been changes in the store rent or things like increased labor or ingredient costs. And I'd also want to understand what's the competition doing different than we are. Great. Now go ahead and let me know where you want to start and why. Okay, pause the video for just a few moments. Write down your key questions that you like to explore and then say them out loud. Now I'm going to talk through an example of a good, typical way of leading the analysis or examining and uncovering key issues. Okay, so for revenue, I like to understand more about the key drivers of revenue, uh, volume and price. Do we have changes about, uh, about volume and price over time? And then costs, you know, I like to understand if there's been any changes in fixed or variable costs because this could be what's driving the lower than expected profitability. So here are the answers to your questions. For revenue, we don't have any information on changes over time in regards to our pricing or our volume. We only have a snapshot of what it is today, which includes our product mix as well. Now, for our costs, we did find that they are in line with competition, both for fixed costs and variable costs. For competitive benchmarks for pricing, we found that we are priced slightly lower than the competition for comparable products. So let's go ahead and take a look at exhibit number one, which has some data the client has shared with us. Okay, here's some data the client just provided. Take a moment to look through. What are your key observations and takeaways? Okay, pause the video for just a few moments and talk out loud what you're seeing here. Now I'm going to talk through an example of a good, typical way of uncovering key insights. Okay, I see we're selling pizza at $7.50 and that we're selling breadsticks at $7. And in looking at the table, I see that some segments are willing to pay uh, higher than those amounts. So it seems to me like we may be pricing our product too low. The client has mentioned that they have not tried bundling in the past. Also, they shared some information on the market's willingness to pay for the bundles. So they want you to calculate two things. First, the maximum revenue they can generate if they choose not to bundle. And two, the maximum revenue they can generate if they do decide to bundle. Okay, pause the video for just a few moments, write down, and then talk out loud your math calculations. Okay. Now I'm going to talk through an example of a good, typical way to do the math. Okay, so if pizza is $2.50, um, 40 million people would buy it at two fifty, dollars and so that's 40 million times 5 over 2, which is uh, 200 million over 2, 100 million, 
All right. Now, if the pizza was four dollars and fifty cents, then thirty million people would buy it at four dollars and fifty cents. So that's um, uh, let's see here. 30 million times 9 over 2 equals 270 million over 2, which is 270 over 2 is 1. 2 goes on 7, 3 with 1, 5, 135. Okay, so 135 million there. All right, so let me see. If the pizza was equal to $8, 20 million people would buy $8, so 8 times 2, 16 times 10, that's 160 million. And then if pizza equals $9, 10 million, only 10 million would get it, so that's 9, 90 million. So for pizza, the revenue maximizing price is $8. Now, let me do the same uh, bottoms up math for the bread stick. So if bread was $1.50, 40 million people would buy it at $1.50, so that's 40 million times 3 over 2, which is 120 million over 2, which equals 60 million. Okay, if the bread sticks was $5, 20 million people would buy it at $5, so that's 100 million. If the bread sticks was $8.50, um, 20 million people would buy it at $8.50, which is 20 million times 17 over 2. 17 times 2, 304, 34 times 10, 340 million over 2, which is 134 over 2, 770 million. And then if breadsticks equals 9, 10 million people would buy it at 9, that's 90 million. Okay, so the, yep, so the revenue maximizing price for breadsticks is $8.50 to get 170 million. So to answer the first question, pizza should be priced at $8.00. Breadstick should be priced at eight dollars and fifty cents, and that leads to revenue of one hundred and sixty million for the pizza plus one hundred and seventy million for the breadsticks equals three hundred and thirty million dollars. So now I need to do um, what would happen if we bundle um, the pizza and breadsticks together. So I'm gonna try to do the same logic. I think so. Um, if the bundle price was ten fifty. I get 40 million people times 1050. So that's 40 million times 10 plus one half, which is 400 million plus 20 million equals 420 million. So then, let's see, if we were to bundle at 1150, um, 30 million would buy that. So um, 30 million times 1150 is 11 plus a half. So that would be 30 times 11 is 330 million. And then a half of 30 million is 15 million. So that's 345 million. And then if we bundled at $13, um, 20 million, only 20 million would buy that. Yep. So that's at 13. So 13 times two is 26 times 10, 260 million. Okay. So the price we should bundle the pizza and breadsticks at would be $10.50, um, and that would get us 40 million people buying it at um, a revenue of $420 million. Now, let's take a few moments to think about some considerations if we were to increase our prices and offer a bundle option. What should the client be thinking about? Pause the video for just a few moments, talk out loud, and jot down some of your thoughts. Now I'm going to talk through an example of a good, typical way to generate ideas. Okay, well, we need to consider how competitors might respond to our pricing change, and we need to produce marketing collateral that talks about the new bundle option, and perhaps increase our marketing spend to get the word out about our new bundled offering. So let's say that the VP walks in and wants a quick overview of your findings and recommendations. What would you tell him? Now I'm going to talk through an example of a good typical recommendation. Okay, we found that we can price higher than we are today to increase profit. And we found that by bundling pizza and breadsticks, we can make $420 million a year. 
So as a risk, we might expect that competitors will respond to our pricing change, so we have to uh, watch for that. And as a next step, we need to assess how we might respond to the competitors' changes or responses rather, uh, we need to produce marketing collateral that talks about the new bundle option and perhaps increase our marketing spend and, and get the word out about this new option. Now that you've finished the case, I want to remind you to comment on this video with your actual responses. I will then reply back and score each of your responses as either good or great. Go ahead and pause the video now so you can see how I would grade you. What you just saw was a realistic example among the top tier consulting firms. The responses that you heard are what I would consider to be good, but not great answers. Unfortunately, these merely good responses will not get you an offer from the top tier consulting firms. Given the intense degree of the competition, only great performance will virtually guarantee an offer. If you were to take away just one thing, it is this fact. The bar to pass is much higher than you think. You need to see and practice what great performance looks like. So to see the same case with a top 1% performance, just go to passthecase.com forward slash great.